The Cannabis Investor Spotlight Series is sponsored by Integrated CBD, an institutional-grade supplier of organically grown hemp and hemp-derived CBD. Integrated CBD's 10,000 acres of drip-irrigated farmland in Arizona allows for sustainable year-round growing. Combine that with their USDA organic certification and their 154,000-square-foot extraction facility, and Integrated CBD is able to deliver unmatched uniformity and consistency that scales with your phytocannabinoid needs. Integrated CBD then goes even further, providing complete transparency into their products by tracking and tracing their CBD from seed to lab to bottles through an exclusive partnership with Verified Organic, a blockchain solution that records and verifies each step of the organic production. To learn how Integrated CBD's vertically integrated, single-origin, fully transparent solution scales to meet your company's hemp and CBD needs, visit integrated-cbd.com. Mention that you heard it on this podcast and receive 5% off your first year orders. Terms and conditions apply. That's integrated-cbd.com to receive 5% off all your first year orders. Integrated CBD, the certified USDA organic, fully traceable, hemp-derived phytocannabinoid solution that delivers at institutional scale. I like to say that ETFs are the most democratized investment vehicle in the world, so much that you, know, you can buy one share. My grandma, who might be interested in you know, putting a little money towards investing in cannabis, she can buy a minimum of one share, all the way up to, say, a European pension fund that may have uh, interest in making an allocation to the cannabis industry. They could buy you know, tens of thousands of shares if they so chose, and everyone is treated equitably. From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. I'm Dan Humiston, and on today's show, what are the next big cannabis business and investment opportunities? Top cannabis investors share their 2020 investment strategies. Today in Raising Cannabis Capital, we are continuing this month's Cannabis Investor Spotlight Series with Matt Markovich, Managing Director of The Cannabis ETF, THCX. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Dan. It's exciting. This is something new for cannabis, I think. This is the first cannabis ETF that I know of that is exclusively cannabis. And you launched this in the summer. And it trades right now on the New York Stock Exchange under symbol THCX. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. For listeners who are not familiar with an ETF, can you explain what it is? Sure. ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. And in short, it's an investment vehicle that the listeners may kind of know as a mutual fund but it actually trades on a stock exchange, as you alluded to, and there is intraday liquidity, meaning you can buy it in the morning and sell it in the afternoon if you wanted to. And there are some other attributes, such as some enhanced tax efficiency, and there's transparency. So every day, you know exactly what is in that portfolio, and that's available on our website. This is very similar to all 2,000 plus ETFs in the United States. So even though there's one T in ETF, I like to think of it as three T's, standing for transparency, tradability, and tax efficiency within the ETF. Okay. There's 37 different cannabis companies in the fund. It seems like a lot. Is that pretty normal? I'd say, as you mentioned, you know, there, there are a few cannabis ETFs. Uh, however, the 37 companies in the portfolio that have exposure to the legal cannabis industry not only you know, kind of cover seed to sale, but there are companies involved in other aspects of the cannabis industry. There are over 100 publicly traded cannabis stocks out there. However, not all of them meet eligibility for our portfolio. Oh, okay. I saw in some of the companies are names that we would recognize, but are also have a division in cannabis, like Scott's. What was yep, the other? Scott's Miracle Grow, one of the bigger holdings. We also have a company in the portfolio called Perkin Elmer. Uh, Perkin Elmer provide lab equipment and uh, testing analysis for companies. Obviously, you know, you go to your dispensary and you see all those nice little stats on your little plastic eighth canister <laughs> of your Girl Scout cookies. That has to come from a lab. 
Yeah. So Perkin Elmer is a publicly traded company that's been doing testing and analysis for many years, and they're just branching in, into cannabis fairly recently. It's so probably a small portion of the business, but again, it's definitely a growing avenue of revenue for them, given the fact that the cannabis industry is growing so rapidly in the U.S. It's grown rapidly in the U.S., but most of the public companies are still in Canada. Is that because of the laws in the United States still? Yeah, 19 of the 37 stocks are what's called Canadian licensed producers. So the companies that have licenses to, to grow and distribute marijuana in Canada. Uh, Canada, as you know, is the second country in the world to have legalized adult use marijuana. And uh, they were the first to kind of really access the public markets. They were early because of you know, that movement towards legalization there. Quite honestly, per the regulatory guidelines here in the U.S., we are not allowed to own any stocks that touch the marijuana plant within the United States, being still a Schedule One substance here. So the U.S. government still views companies operating illegally yeah. for all intents and purposes. So we're not allowed to own stocks of those companies within the fund, and that goes for our peer group as well. I'd like to take a quick break to thank one of our sponsors, Creating Better Days, and their line of high-quality CBD products. The benefits of including CBD into your wellness lifestyle are well documented, but with so many brands, it's hard to know which one to trust. Creating Better Days manufacturing process includes an additional step that includes nano emulsification technology, making their products more effective, faster absorbent, and more potent. And with the transparency of specific QR codes and lot numbers on each package, you can be confident that you always receive the highest quality CBD from U.S. Grown Hemp. To learn more about Creating Better Days high quality CBD products and to receive 20% off today's order, go to creatingbetterdays.com and use coupon code RAISING at checkout. That's creatingbetterdays.com, coupon code RAISING at checkout. Creating Better Days trusted, high-quality hemp CBD products. I'm on your website right now, and there's, if, if somebody's curious about investing in cannabis and wants more information about it, you have a great brochure in here called Cannabis Essentials. I think that would be really helpful for people thinking about making investments. And the best part about, about what you're doing is that you're opening this up to everybody. You don't need to be accredited and... I mean, you can probably say it better than I, but it's just buying stocks. It's pretty easy, right? I like to say that ETFs are the most democratized investment vehicle in the world, so much that you, know, you can buy one share. My grandma, who might be interested in you know putting a little money towards investing in cannabis, she can buy a minimum of one share, all the way up to, say, a European pension fund that may have uh, interest in making an allocation to the cannabis industry. They could buy... You know, tens of thousands of shares if they so chose. And everyone is treated equitably. There's no sort of redemption period or holding period. You could buy in the morning and you can sell in the afternoon. So you have that intraday liquidity. And everyone is treated on the same playing field in terms of uh, the fee they pay, or how, how the fund is taxed. And again, there's that transparency. So every single holder of the ETF knows what, exactly what's in the fund on a daily basis. I'm flicking around the website while we're talking, but I noticed that a lot of your investments are in the pharmaceutical and biotech side of the cannabis industry. Is that because there are more of those companies that are public right now? Yeah, correct. As the cannabis ecosystem develops globally, we expect to see more companies, you know, ancillary companies involved. But right now, the companies that have come to access the public markets and are listed on uh, major exchanges such as the NYSE, NASDAQ, or the Toronto Stock Exchange uh, happen to be in the pharmaceutical and biotech industries. A lot of these companies sort of bridge the industry in terms of they're almost agricultural biotech and retail at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. Think about a company like Canopy Growth. Yeah. They have a crop. They have to extract from on a scientific basis certain elements from the plant, and they also have storefronts up in Canada where they distribute the product to the buyers. So it's a really unique ecosystem in that you do have companies that are vertically integrated, but again, as, as I mentioned earlier, you do have companies that are specific in terms of services that they provide to the cannabis industry. And I also saw, I think, Canopy River on there. That's their investment arm. Yep. Canopy Rivers has a, has a pretty sizable portfolio 
uh, cannabis companies, again, not only that are growers and distributors, but they have you know, various companies in the cannabis ecosystem, technology companies, for instance, mm-hmm. that aren't big enough to list on an exchange. Uh, they're private for now. Hopefully, you know, I'm sure Canopy Rivers thinks that, that they have the ability to go public at some point. But for now, it's almost like a venture fund of cannabis. Yeah. Well, it looks like you've touched the entire cannabis ecosystem in, with this fund. We've been speaking with Matt Markowitz, the managing director of the cannabis ETF THCX. And we'll have all of his contact information, including the stock symbol THCX, on the MJ Bulls website. You know, if somebody's interested in, in purchasing some stock, you don't have to make a big commitment here. <laughs> his grandmother can go buy one share, buy it in the morning and sell it in the afternoon. Matt, this has been great. I appreciate your education that you gave everyone. And I appreciate you being on the show. Thanks for having me, Dan. Look forward to uh, hopefully being on again. Yeah, for sure. We'll definitely make that happen. Today's show was made possible by the generous support of our sponsors, like Helix TCS, the leading provider of critical infrastructure services to the legal cannabis industry. Recently, Helix's president of data services and former New York Stock Exchange executive Garvis Toller was a guest on the show to discuss cannabis capital markets and how savvy businesses and investors are capitalizing on the recent downturn. Tune into episode 152 to learn more. Today's podcast was produced by MJ Bulls Media, the industry's premier cannabis podcast network, with original music produced in part by Jamie Humiston. I'm Dan Humiston, and you've been listening to the Raising Cannabis Capital Podcast.